and today doing things a little bit differently we're going to go over how to prep a figure for customizing I'm doing this because it was a viewer request it was uh, on my last video uh, one of the viewers wants to know how to get started on stuff and I do want to apologize it's been what maybe a month now since the last video um, I do I did want to take a quick break to play spider-man 2 and I did and it's a great game fantastic um, but towards the end of my playthrough, um, I actually got sick pretty bad. And uh, I had the, the severe part of it was uh, my neck. I could barely move my neck left or right, up and down. I could barely sleep. It took me like two hours just to find a comfortable place just to actually lay my head down and sleep that way. Uh, very painful. I didn't even work. And I wasn't doing too much with customizing or any figures I was just trying to rest and get better and uh, as of right now I am much better um, I'm not a hundred percent hopefully my neck is better but we'll see uh, but I'm at this point where I'm ready to continue to work on stuff now I did finish a couple of co uh, customs in the last few weeks I just haven't made videos on them yet I want to get this out first and then those videos will follow up um, but let's go ahead and get into it so uh, this is, again, noob friendly um, and also kind of broad reaching. So I do use Hasbro's Marvel Legends for customizing and I do make mostly female characters. So that's what we're seeing today. However, if you prefer male characters or you're, you know that's what you're working on uh, or if you use Mattel figures like for wrestling or McFarlane's because you like DC or SH Figure Arts or whatever it is. Uh, this will be a broad overview on how to customize a figure though again I'm using Hasbro Marvel Legends so I am specifically going to be talking about these but all of those are made of plastic anyway so it's going to be more or less the same kind of uh, approach that you would need to have to prep a figure for customizing. Now with that said before you get started you have to ask, ask yourself how many figures do you actually want? Are you just trying to do one or two customs and be done with it? Is it because you really want that Savage Land Rogue? And trust me, Hasbro is never going to make that. As the loud, loudest truck in the world goes by. Um, Hasbro is never going to make that Savage Land Rogue. So if you really want it, you have two options. You can make it yourself or you can commission someone to make it for you. And that's my advice, actually, for anyone that just wants one or two figures. I know commission prices are sky high, but it's worth it. Trust me. And or you can pay like Moffex or whatever uh, SH Figure Arts and they would make something like that. But Hasbro is not going to make a, a Savage Land Rogue. They're never going to go that sexy on any of their figures. So if you really want that Madeline Pryor, you really want that uh, Savage Land Rogue or whatever uh, and a bikini power girl in a bikini or something like that you're gonna have to either go to an import company like Moffex or uh, you know SH figure arts or those or you'll have to make it yourself or customize it or get a, a commission from a customizer that's it but if you want a bunch of customs if you are trying to get in the customizing field and start making whether it be for yourself like I do I don't sell my stuff um, or you want to start selling customs because you can make some money then this is the video for you so um, that being said yeah if you're just wanting the a quick little custom just fi find someone to make it for you that way you don't have to waste time and materials and money um, on trying to get something to look perfect when you've never done it before but I've learned how to customize through watching YouTube videos. I'm not saying I'm any kind of God at customizing, but after three years, I, I know I've gotten to a point where things look really good, not perfect, but you can learn just like I did and you will be fine. Now, um, 
what you're seeing in front of you here, these are test fits. I'm making sure, because this is the first step, once you are getting into it, you have to make sure, uh, one, actually the second step. So this is the first step. Make sure that your whatever it is that you want actually can be done physically. Like the logistics of it, because that's part of customizing is uh, logistics and, and engineering. Like figuring out, can this actually work on this body? Uh, examples like Alphonse from um, Full Metal Alchemist and his big armor. What body would you use that? Like, how would you try to make it? Is there something that you have in mind? Uh, you think you can just take any generic uh, muscly guy and turn that into a big body of armor and he still maintains the articulation and the arms or the head and having all of the details without it looking really shoddy or anything like that? You have to think about uh, outside of the box sometimes when you are making customs and sometimes even thinking outside the box it's just not physically possible um, but if you can do it more power to you um, but once you figure that part out then you can go to uh, getting the test fits you have to make sure that what it is that you're trying to make and what you what resources you have available actually fit together and actually work together um, so in this case, like I'm taking this, this is an old version of a, a custom that I did. I'm going to redo it because I never finished it, but this new version of it has a different legs and different upper torso and from the lower torso and so on. So once it's done, like all of this is sh showing it's put together and it's just not painted properly and sanded and all of that stuff. Same thing here. This is a moonstone head. And I'm giving her a completely new body from the original Moonstone. So because of that, I have to make sure that the parts that I want to give her actually work well together. And they, they are still articulating. This is a very important step. You actually do need to do this to make sure that they all articulate correctly. That there isn't anything super loose or you know floating around. Because not all parts work together on bu certain um, books. Like... If I were to put these arms right here that are on this prototype for Moonstone, if I were to put them on this back here, the arms would swing super loose. They don't fit in this, but they fit on this. And it didn't come with the, this torso, did not come with these arms. They're completely different. But these arms would not fit on this one at all. Or uh, actually, it does fit on this one here, but not on this one or this one. So. You have to make sure that ahead of time that all of the parts that you're trying to use actually fit together. Um, now, it's a personal thing. You can see all of these legs are actually modular. They, they can pop on and off. I can take them off anytime I want just with the you know super ease like this. Um, that's kind of how Hasbro has been making their figures lately. They, they do this like the pinless legs. You can just take them off. Um, and then these are a little bit older, but they still can go on and off a figure. I prefer that most of the time when I'm making customs. However, like soon I'm actually going to do like this. This will be the first time I'll ever just actually use the default legs on the figure, um, that are not modular. They don't pop off like this. This will be the first time I'll ever do that very soon. So, um, if you want some tutorials on anything on how to get your old figures like this, because that is the case with this one and this one, they, they, they look like this originally, um, where the legs did not pop off, but I made them that way. So they, I made it like this so I can pop them off. If you want tutorials on that, these are also resin copies of heads. These are not original. I mean, they're, they were original heads from Hasbro, but these are my own resin and made copies of them. Or if you want tutorials on what kind of paint to use or how to sand or any of those specific things, let me know in the comment section below because I can make those videos. But again, I am self-taught from YouTube. I guess it's not really self-taught, but watching others on YouTube make videos on customizing so this stuff is already out there if you want me to go over it just let me know and i will do my best to make a video covering all of the different things that you are specifically asking about but still staying on a broader sense um all of this stuff is fitting the way that i want it to 
um, like the way I expect it to. And again, it's a very important step because you don't want to get so far uh, ahead of yourself and just say, hey, I just bought this figure right out the box and I'm just going to use this whole thing uh, and, and it's fine. And then you start customizing and putting it back together. And then you come to realize, oh, wait, the knee was really loose. I can't believe that. I thought it would be fine because it was a brand new out of the box figure. You need to test everything to make sure that it works exactly the way it's supposed to and put it all together to make sure it looks good and looks the way that it's supposed to. I know it's kind of hard to imagine this being all white, like for Moonstone and hard to imagine this. This is still going to be Green Lantern. So now I've got to switch the torso and put the green there this is going to be someone else entirely different you see her legs are green and black and purple and all these different things it's hard to use your imagination sometimes but it is getting the bones there to make sure the bones fit and then starting to work from there so make sure you do that step before you get started so now uh even doing this whether you're putting stuff together or taking it apart you need to heat up the plastic some kind of way to make sure that you can actually take these things apart whether you're taking the arms off taking the upper torso from the lower torso uh, to even taking the heads off the feet the legs etc um, you can do that one or two one of two ways and the, the first way the way that i do the way that i recommend uh, would be just getting a generic hair dryer doesn't have to be anything fancy as long as it blows hot air um, this one, I believe, costs like $10 at Target, something like that. And, yeah, the idea is I'm going to heat up all of these joints so that way um, I can pop off the legs. I can pop off the parts. So, like, in this case, if we're talking about these pins on the legs, you're going to heat the knee with the hair dryer, And it's going to get the plastic all soft. And it'll be hot, but it'll be also really soft, a lot softer than it is now. It'll be like uh, like putty almost once it gets that soft. And then you find something that you can use to push the pin through um, so that it'll come out on the other side. Now, what I use for that is this screwdriver. This, I don't know the exact name of the screwdriver. Um, I bought it years ago like 10 years ago probably because i needed to repair my playstation 3. um so this is one of those screwdrivers and i again you can find it at any hardware store it's not a phillips it's not a flathead it has just this weird flat p push on the part on the tip and then it kind of curves down and it's just it's just weird um i don't know but uh, if you have a ring device you might actually already have this but a shorter version because i know there's like a one's like this big um, and it has the same exact tip, but I use that to push the pins through on all these figures. I use it for other things as well, but it does come in handy for customizing. So with that said, you're going to use that to dismantle your figures to make sure you get all of the parts that you need, um, and then put everything together. And then you got to dismantle all of this stuff. So that's basically the next step for me. Now, if you don't want to use a hair dryer, you don't have to. You can also use the hot water technique. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, I would advise you, like if you're going to say, I want to take these uh, this torso apart uh, and take the arms off and so on, so you can prep it. Use like this, like I need on those pliers. You're going to heat that water up, whether it be on the pot in the stove and a microwave and the and a cup or maybe you have one of those hot water makers that looks like for tea or whatever you make hot water that way uh, as long as you're not putting this in the pot directly and let it hit the hit the bottom of the pot no get that water hot first and then just dunk this in there and hold it so it can get hot and then pull it out because you don't want this touching the bottom of the pot while the, the fire is going it's going to melt the plastic it's going to damage your figure and stuff um, I wouldn't put this in the microwave with the cup. I would just heat the water separately. Once it's hot, then you can dunk it in there outside of the microwave and so on. One, I don't do that because it's going to make a mess. Um, two, I prefer working in my room. I can use the hair dryer whenever I want. It's so, you know plugged in. And it's easy access. Turn it on. It's hot almost immediately. And then I can put it away and without having to 
you get all these pots and pans and stuff. And third, if you're, you know, using a, a pot, um, I don't, I mean, I cook out of my pots. So I don't want any of the paint or any of the, uh, top coat that they use in the factory, even it's just the plastic itself to be touching something that I eat out of. So unless you have like a dedicated pot for that sort of thing, I wouldn't, uh, advise that, but it's to each his own, whatever you find easiest. Uh, just again, make sure you clean that pot afterward and don't let this touch the bottom of the pot while the heat is still on. Just dunk it in there. That's my advice. But once it's hot, again, it'll turn very jelly-like. It'll be like putty, really soft. And then you'll be able to pull out the arms. Um, but that won't work on these double-jointed ones. So that's a different uh, double-jointed pinless arms or the pinless legs. You're going to have to go for a different approach on that. As far as pinless stuff goes, uh, I'm still kind of working on a, a good surefire way to get a good clean uh, custom custom thing for pinless arms and pinless legs. Um, I'm working on that soon, but at the time of this video, I don't know a good clear way to uh, customize pinless legs and pinless arms without it looking bad. I've done it, but I, it, I have I've not done it super well. You can actually see this Claire right there. She has pinless legs. It's a custom, uh, but the back of her legs look really bad. The front looks great, but you can't see that. <laughs> Uh, you can't see the back because it doesn't look too good. And those are pinless legs. So I'm working on that. They just don't have it today. So um, perhaps other people out there might have that type of tutorial. Or maybe in the future I'll come back and make a tutorial specifically on pinless legs and arms. But right now it's still in, uh, still processing for me. Still working it out. But once you have everything dismantled. I usually put everything in a bowl, like uh, just to keep everything together. I just put all the pot parts and all the pins and stuff in a bowl for my custom, and then I take it downstairs for more prepping. So that's the next part of what we'll be talking about today. All right, so we're in a new area now. This is my basement. Half of the magic happens in my bedroom. The other half happens down here in the basement because this is stuff that I don't want to be doing in my bedroom. Working with all these, all these chemicals and, you know, all the sanding and the dust that kicks up. I don't want to be making a mess in my carpeted bedroom. So we're down here in this basement with tile. Now, uh, generally, if you're working with all this stuff, you want to work in a well-ventilated area as well. That's why I don't do this in my bedroom. Um, although it would be better there because I can open up windows. Here in my basement, my windows are very small. So if it does come to things like that, that are very toxic to breathe in, I usually walk away. I'll do what I have to do and get out, out of here and let it fumigate on its own. I don't stay in the uh, the nasty chemical area. I also have, you can see I have my goggles here. I have a mask in a drawer back here as well. So these are all things that you need to consider when you are uh, making customs is uh, ventilation and safety. So uh, to continue on with prepping figures, I took a couple of them, just not all of those other ones we were in the previous section, but I took a couple of them. You can see I've dismantled everything, so they're all in separate pieces. Again, I use the heater, the, the hair dryer, to take everything apart, including all the pins and stuff. Um, I've got upper and lower torso and all the jacket and everything here. And then here's the other one. I ran out of bowls, so I had to use a cup. But everything is dismantled on this one as well. So the now that we are here, the first thing is to remove the paint. We have to take all of the factory paint off because when we are painting, we don't want to paint on top of the factory paint. We want to paint on the plastic. So we have to make sure that all of the factory paint is gone as well as uh, factory will put like a top coat on there to seal their paint in. So there's more chemicals at work as well. You don't want to be painting on that. You want to be touching specifically the plastic when you are customizing uh, and doing your, your paint stuff. So that is what I'm working on right now. And to do that, we're going to use this I get at Target. You can get it at Walgreens or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's 100% acetone nail polish remover. So that's all that it has to be. It doesn't need to be a brand or anything 
at all like that. It just needs to be 100% acetone nail polish remover. And we're going to use this specifically on all of the parts that are painted. So I don't have a lot in this particular figure that needs to get uh, paint get removed. In fact, I do have paint from a previous, like this hand, I used it on something else. So I'm going to remove the paint on that. And then all the rest of this is actually just plastic. So I don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, you can use whatever. You can use cotton swabs. I found that using cotton swabs on larger pieces just makes no sense because you are going to, you know, need a lot of cotton swabs to get a whole lot of area covered um, when you can just use a paper towel and done, you know. All that's done. This one has the little code on the back of the thing and the little acetone there. You take that off. Now, even the plastic that is pigmented uh, and it doesn't have any paint on it, it still will have a top coat on there from the factory or just, you know, some sort of a uh, seal or what have you. You don't necessarily need to use the acetone on that um, because we're going to wash these later on. But to get the paint off, you want to do that because you want to paint on directly the plastic. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can see it's um, supposed to be a pink piece of plastic. And all done with that one. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right, so I finished paint or removing the paint on this first one already. It was just took a little while. I remember that yellow hand. It was it was yellow. It's red now because it was originally red plastic. Um, I do want to mention before I do the second one, because I forgot, um, when you're doing and make, making your customs, you make sure you work smarter, not harder. Uh, for instance, the character that I'm going to be making with this torso has white shorts. So all of this intersection, like all of the stuff that's on the inside is already white plastic, and these pins are already white, this groin area is already white. Um, and she, again, she has super short shorts, but for the most part, this area where my finger is, is going to be all white. I don't need to paint that if I don't want to, and I really shouldn't have to. Uh, as details in there that I'm going to be adding, and then I'll, I'll paint that, but the whole point of this is to avoid as much paint rub as possible. Paint rub is when you have two parts that are going to be rubbing up against each other and normally if it's factory like this is plastic white on white it's not going to be any big deal but if it is say i need to uh, paint like these elbows or knees or something like that and i bend them and they start coming in contact like right here at this this part right here uh that's touching the plastic it's going to be rubbing off because of all that. So that's why we're sanding it down to avoid paint rub. And also in other areas, uh, and this one in particular, it's already white there, so I don't need to paint that. So I don't have to worry about paint rub. Same thing goes with this one. This is going to be a Green Lantern, uh, Jessica Cruz. And her, she has black pants. So in this case, it, you know, like I said, this one is like a classic. I've never actually made a figure keeping these pins in there like that the hip pins but it's going to be fine in this case because i don't have to paint anything in this case this is how i normally would work where i have the uh, hip parts outward and then i can add the legs uh, in a modular kind of way but again she has black pants so all of this on the inside is already black the pin's already black. I don't need to paint that whatsoever. So when I put the legs on there, I don't have to worry about the paint on the legs because I do have to paint this. This is painted, right? I don't have to worry about this rubbing off on anything because there's no paint for it to come in contact with. It's just going to be plastic. So if you have something that's painted on and then it's touching that's a plastic that's not painted, it, you don't have to worry about paint rub for the most part. Uh, you still don't want it to be touching, but in some cases it's kind of unavoidable. Uh, so like I said, in this case, all this is going to be black. I'm just going to remove this blue line here because there is going to be green painted up this way and on the back. But for the most part down here, it's all black. Um, same thing goes with knees. She has black pants, so these knees are already black plastic. I don't need to re-sand uh, anything at all. Um, I am, because I am particular, because there is a very, uh, a difference between paint and colors and, and, and pigmented plastic colors. 
they don't match necessarily even blacks and whites sometimes the white might be a little yellowish or a grayish white or it might be very bright white uh, but plastic white and plastic or uh, plastic white and painted white plastic black and painted black red yellow etc they're not always going to same going to be the same especially if you are uh, using different brands uh, even different brands of paint like they have different kinds of white some whites are just a little bit off or a little bit brighter or than others and if you're mixing and matching like that you might find yourself looking at something that's white but has multiple shades of white because you use different kinds of paint so uh, so I'm particular I'm still going to paint the outside of this knee black or the you know the actual knee itself so that it matches the black that I'm going to be painting on the rest of the legs and the rest of the figure but the inside here all of this stuff where it actually connects I'm going to leave this completely alone I'm not going to sand it not going to paint it or anything like that because it's black plastic it's not going to rub off or be, be affected uh, whatsoever when it's on the inside of this on this knee or inside this leg here it d doesn't matter you're not even going to see this part because most people will be looking in the front which is this uh, this is the back side who's going to see that no one you don't need to paint that whatsoever and if it really does bother you you can go ahead and do that and paint the whole thing but uh, in general I would just paint the front so that way this black and this black would match um, yeah, like I said work smarter not harder you can totally plan ahead in that kind of sense uh, but sometimes it's just completely unavoidable maybe you uh, are using a cheap figure you got at third hand and you really want to make uh, a particular character but it doesn't you know all of those parts like the knees and the elbows and stuff are the wrong color and you just got to paint it anyway understandable but if you can try to work around that so that you save yourself time and effort and it'll look and function the way that you want it to without paint rub all right so now i'm going to start removing the paint on this one it has considerably more paint uh, on this one but it's still the same process 100% uh, acetone and i'm going to use this paper towel all right so no lie for the purposes of this video i didn't actually remove the paint on all of this one because i'm just going to focus on one right now so we can get this through and I can spend more time editing this video and getting it up but uh, one thing I do want to real quick throw in there like I've been saying I do make resin copies of things um, I have resin copies of uh, Storm's boot from the punk storm figure um, the you know the 80s her the mohawk these are resin copies of that and I'm going to use that on this figure instead of the flat feet that are normally on that figure um, so these are resin copies um, again I'm not going to go over the resin copy process in this video uh, if that's something that you want to learn about you can either look it up on YouTube like I did and see other people have already made this um, sort of thing like heads and stuff because I do make heads again that's what this is right here um, but for today I do need to since I made a copy there's no hole in the inside of this where you actually push the leg. So I'm using my rotary tool. I have a Dremel. Um, again, you don't need to buy a Dremel specifically. This is just a brand name like Coca-Cola uh, and Pepsi are colas. This is just a brand name. You need a rotary tool. So it doesn't matter what brand you get. I just happen to get a really good deal on this one. But I'm going to use a Dremel first on this because I'm going to drill a hole in each of these shoes so because when you make a copy of the, with the resin um, it goes in there and then ends up filling up so you have to actually make a hole after it's been cured and I've cured this is like this is so old I made this like two years ago probably um, but I'm going to drill a hole in there so that way when we are getting to assembly I can stick the foot in there or the leg in there and it'll be done so that's what I'm working on right now Okay, so got our holes in there now. Can't probably see that too well. Yeah, there you go. There's a hole. There's a hole now. So I can stick that in there. Um, now it is time for sanding. So uh, I do other things with this drill bit when uh, making preps uh, for different figures, but for the most part, I only use this, 
or I mainly use this for uh, this bit, I should say, for drilling holes, um, obviously. But uh, you know, whenever you're switching heads, always unplug your rotary tool because you don't want that thing to turn on while you're trying to uh, put your fingers on the spinny part because you don't want to hurt yourself. Uh, but I'm going to use the rotary tool now to sand. So I have the sand bit here. Um, one important thing to note, so when you're sanding, uh, this one is a very, I'd say it's a very fine sand bit, and then there's some that are more coarse. Uh, the coarse ones are going to leave a lot of lines sanding lines on your figure you don't want that because it'll it'll show you'll see that later on um, but in particular we're going to uh, take the back sides of these shoes that I made because there's like a little hump on the back uh, I can barely see it I'm sorry but um, I need to round it out and smooth it at and smooth that out and then we're going to take all the parts that are going to that would normally touch each other so in this case um, here on top of the thighs here let me, let me uh, grab a example all right look I, I found a guy uh, I keep a lot of spares right back here so when you're sanding and dremeling specifically or rotary tooling uh, all the joints the parts of the figure that you want to concentrate on on the are the ones that will touch naturally it's like here on these knees they would touch in this space obviously the knee joints itself is touching the thighs um, same thing with the feet here this the ball joint here you you want to sand on that um, right here in the thighs where the hips and the thighs touch um, torso in, in this case for a man a male figure uh, it has the torso cut here and there so you want to sand this here and sand the in between space here um, you're going to sand the elbow joints here the wrist as well where the hand and the uh, arm meet you're going to sand the wrist part you're going to sand the uh, pin that's in the actual uh, not the actual pin that goes inside but the part of it that actually goes back and forth on the inside of the hand um, this was a such an old figure. It's a kind of a bad example um, But yeah, you also want to sand the neck The neck pin right there. So that way it's all ready to paint. You're going to use the Dremel for that as well um, At least I would Now there are other people that do things differently again uh, this folks that would uh, instead of doing all of the sanding and stuff they might use writ dye and take whatever piece or possibly even the whole figure and they use writ dye and say oh i'm going to i need it to be red and then they'll throw the figure in the writ dye and then it'll change the color of the plastic to red and then they let it dry and then they don't have to worry about painting uh, the majority of the figure like if it's carnage he's mostly red so you would just dip it in red and then once it's dried up you'll just have a red figure and then you can paint the black lines on it afterward that would be a way I don't do that but I have seen it and it works for the people that it works for I can't give you advice specifically on that you'd have to look it up um, but yeah that's pretty much the idea here that I'm going to be all the points of contact even on the inside here this is for a lady so this is different than the men um, for Marvel Legends that is I'm gonna sand Dremel all the inside of there because the lower torso goes there I'm going to Dremel here and the armpit just like the little bit on the outside just to make it a little bit smaller uh, same thing on this side and then the neck hinge I'm going to paint or excuse me Dremel that as well but not too much because these things are a little sensitive you can go overboard and you could Dremel too much and then it'll either just break flat out because you made it too small or it could break later on uh, when you're trying to do head swaps and stuff and you made it too thin and you end up pulling it off and you could break it that way so you do have to be very careful when dremeling this uh, hinge on the neck I have had that happen to me uh, you're gonna need to do the 
the the pin here on the elbow or excuse me the shoulder and then here's where the arm inserts you're going to dremel that a little bit again you're just making sure all the places where plastic normally would be touching um, you're going to be painting that so now that it's touching or it, it would touch it, it would rub off if you had painted it so you're going to avoid all of that uh, one thing that i am doing differently lately is uh with the knees in particular uh, at least i'm gonna i've been trying to do I, I can't say it works with certainty but one thing i've been doing lately is i will sand this and dremel it you know sand it down um then i'll paint the knee fully finish it put top coat on it and everything before i do anything else i'll just do that with the knee and then i'll add it to the unfinished leg and then you know fully add it put the pins in there and stuff like that but it'll just be this part that I, that's painted and then um then i'll go ahead and paint the, with the pins in, paint the leg and that way um, i can paint all the inside of here and the inside of here without it not matching or uh, rubbing off during that process of putting things together at the end this is Maybe a little complicated to go over your head, but you might get that at one point in time. Uh, another thing that I'm doing right now, or at least I'm going to try to do, is to not dremel this much at all. And just worry about the only little bit that shows here that would be showing in all the inside and not painted at all. Normally I would paint the entire thing, but since it's on the inside, you're never going to see it. So I figure, why paint it? So that's what I'm going to be trying to do going forward I don't know how well it's going to work out but again dremeling uh, we're going to start here with this one and let's see got to dremel this is the upper part of the thigh and then this is the part of the thigh that touches the knee part so we're going to this will be normally touching this right here so we got to make sure that once it's together you're going to dremel it just a little bit not a whole lot just a little bit just enough that if it does touch it, it would be barely touching it because you are going to add paint on this and that's going to make it thicker. So you don't want to take too much off, but you also don't want to put too much paint on it either. It's just a kind of a thing you have to figure out on your own. All right, so that's done. Uh, done enough. Again, very light. You don't have to go ham. Be very light handed, not heavy handed. Um, then here's a the part that would be touching the knee, so we're going to go over that as well. All right, and so on this piece, I'm not going to use Dremel. This would be something I would sand still, but I would sand the, this part here because it's going to be touching, touching this. All right, I'm going to sand this part here by hand with a hand uh, sandpaper. Same thing with the rest of the body. I'm not going to use the Dremel on this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. Like I said, I've already um, said all the parts of that. I am going to use the Dremel on the inside of here, though, because although one thing I've it took me three years to figure it out, um, don't paint to the inside of that. I'm still going to Dremel it, but don't paint the inside. No one's ever going to see it, so there's no point of putting paint there. Um, it took me three years to figure that out. <laughs> And I'm still dremeling it because it's going to eventually touch this and it would be touching the paint that I'm going to be adding on the lower torso the parts on the inside so I'm still going to dremel it just to get a little bit more room just to make sure it doesn't have any paint rub uh, come off but there's no going I'm not going to paint the inside of this at all uh, I just it's just like an extra precaution to make sure that what I paint on here uh, doesn't touch anything at all or doesn't touch much um, but for the most part that's it I'm not gonna do the whole thing right now uh, once everything is done with the dremeling I am going to also come back and take sandpaper again this is very uh, fine sandpaper and I sand the entire thing not just the parts that I dremeled but everything um, including the softer plastic I would soft this I would sand that as well because the sanding makes uh, an area for the paint to go because you're gonna prime it maybe it's up to you uh, but you need somewhere for that paint to go so once it's done like uh, with the Dremel I will 
sand it, you know, it doesn't need to be super incredible, but as long as you sand most of it, you're going to be fine. Um, now do that to everything here. Um, and then the last step would be soap and water. Just wash it, regular soap and water, nothing fancy. Um, make sure it's dry and then you can start prepping for uh, whatever it is you need to do next. Maybe it's sculpting or maybe you're just going to go straight into painting if you don't need to sculpt anything on the figure. But I'm not covering that today. This is all, that's all like actually doing the work of making the custom. Um, but this is the prep work video. So if you have anything else, uh, that again, if you got any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. Um, this is not something I normally do. This is literally the first tutorial I've made, but I don't mind making more. Just let me know and I can uh, instruct you on at least my way of doing things and uh, maybe help you out or point you in the right direction if there's something else that, uh, that you're asking that I don't do. But for the, what it's worth, um, I don't mind making these videos. Uh, let me know how you feel. And um, as far as these actual figures, they will have their own video content uh, going up as soon as I get them done. And hopefully I am over my sickness and I can start uh, making more content for you guys. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can see more tutorial videos or let me know what you want to see. And subscribe to see more of my customs. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, have a good one.